Have you ever seen a person with yellow eyes and yellow skin? Jaundice gets its own origin from the French word jaunis, which something means yellowness. If you are diagnosing a person with jaundice, you may see yellow discoloration of eyes, skin, intestinal fluid. and the mucous membrane the reason behind the yellowness of the body is the component which is known as bilirubin so it is really important to know that how the bilirubin is produced in the body before starting with the physiology let me tell you one thing the normal range of bilirubin uh ranges between between 0.2 up to the 1.2 or some people say it's 1.6 mg per dl whatever so let's say there is slight increase in this level and it has become 1.9 mg per deciliter what is this condition is called it is known as hyper bilirubinemia but this much level uh, like say 1.9 mg per deciliter increment in the level will not cause the yellow discoloration of the skin there is a range which is something greater than or equals to 2.5 mg per deciliter if there is this much increase in the bilirubin level in the body this will cause the yellow discoloration of sclera skin mucous membrane and interfold now here is a rbc uh this rbc is in age of 120 days it has become really old you know rbc don't have nucleus so they don't have a capacity to regenerate what will happen to them they'll have to get lost they will be phagocytized by the macrophages present in the spleen and retico endothelial system you know graveyard of rbc spleen is known that graveyard of rbc now here this rbc will eventually break up into the two parts first part is membranous part and the other one is hemoglobin this membranous part with further eventually breaks up into lipids and proteins this lipid eventually goes up to the free fatty it will eventually goes up to the free fatty acid and this protein part will go to the amino acid pool what about the hemoglobin now this is really important to know what will happen with the hemoglobin it will breaks up into the heme part and the globin now this globin will again eventually goes up to the amino acid pool but this heme this will breaks up into iron and protoporphyrin protoporphyrin this iron is stored in the body in a form of ferritin uh let's say there is a bunch of ferritin here this is known as hemosiderin now this protoporphyrin with some enzymatic action will converts into bilirubin and further into bilirubin when bilirubin is coming out from the spleen it goes to the blood vessels here the special friends are waiting for them which are, are released by the hepatocyte present in the liver and this is known as bilirubin binding protein this binds with this protein and 
makes some another component <clears throat> now this after their meeting up they will go to the liver what happens there an hepatocyte let's say this is your a hepatocyte now this was unconjugated bilirubin because it is fat soluble not water soluble now after coming to the hepatocyte what will happen there is an enzyme which is waiting for them known as u g t which is called uridin gluconeolyl transferase this enzyme will make unconjugated bilirubin to the conjugated bilirubin conjugated bilirubin to the conjugated bilirubin here we get the conjugated bilirubin now this conjugated bilirubin will goes to the biliary system and from there it gets stored into the gall bladder now let's say you have eaten of something which were now coming into the small intestine here this conjugated bilirubin mix with this part and with the microbes present in the gut they will get converted into the urobilinogen and further it will converted into the streptobilinogen which is responsible for the yellow color of the feces now though all the urobilinogen will not convert into the streptobilinogen some urobilinogen get recycled and goes back to the liver and some goes to the kidney from there when urine formation occurs this urobilinogen is responsible for the yellow discoloration of the urine so this was the normal physiology that how bilirubin is producing in the body now if any of the mechanism get impaired or any at any place there is a disturbance so let's see that how jaundice occurs if we get any disturbance at any place in the bilirubin production jaundice occurs whether there is increase in unconjugated bilirubin or there is in both well increase in unconjugated bilirubin known as unconjugated hyper bilirubinemia and increase in conjugated bilirubin known as conjugated hyper bilirubinemia <clears throat> now let's say there is a condition called extravascular extravascular hemolytic anemia what happens here the young rbcs are getting this here the young rbcs are getting breaking up let's understand it with an example let's say there is a hepatocyte and it normally converts the unconjugated bilirubin into conjugated bilirubin Mm, let's say about five molecules per minute, and maximum it can do with the ten molecules per minute. But in this condition, let's say it become fifteen molecules per minute. Now, what happens with this extra five molecules? Because these hepatocytes are not really able to work hard. This extra five molecules will. goes into the blood vessel and this will increase the unconjugated bilirubin into the body the always there is a patient suffering for anemia they will get this unconjugated bilirubin 
there is something called physiologic jaundice of newborn. What happens in this condition? The hepatocytes are really not mature enough to convert unconjugated bilirubin into the conjugated bilirubin. And from where this unconjugated bilirubin, excess unconjugated bilirubin is coming? Because in a newborn, there is breakdown of fetal RBC. <clears throat> so, this excess will go to the blood vessel or rather I say, goes to the basal ganglia of a newborn because this unconjugated bilirubin is lipid soluble and it can easily close the blood brain barrier. It can easily close the blood brain barrier. What will happen? The patient will die. The treat of condition is the phototherapy. Now let's talk about the conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Let's say unconjugated bilirubin comes here, goes to the hepatocyte, conjugation was normal and they have become conjugated bilirubin also. But after going to the bilirubin system, what happens? Let's say there is some obstruction here, there is some stone or let's say some carcinoma. What will happen? This conjugated bilirubin is not able to get down now to the gallbladder. There is backflow of the conjugated bilirubin and this will eventually go into the liver and from there will go into the blood vessel and there is increase in conjugated bilirubin. Now, this is something known as obstructive jaundice. And the previous condition where there was increased the conjugated bilirubin, unconjugated bilirubin with the hemolysis that was, no, that was known as hemolytic jaundice. Now there is some generic conditions regarding with the jaundice. The first one is kegler nazar syndrome and the other one is Gilbert syndrome. What happens with the kregler nazar syndrome? Actually, there is deficiency of UGT enzyme that is uridin gluconeryl transferase and in Gilbert syndrome, there is deficiency of uh, rather I can say there is total absence of UGT enzyme. To this we are done with the increase in level of unconjugated bilirubin and we are done with the increase in conjugated bilirubin. Now there are some conditions in which there is increment in the both type of bilirubin unconjugated and conjugated. This is known as hepatic jaundice. Hepatic jaundice. What will happen? There is liver insufficiency. This is the common condition occurs in the viral hepatitis which will totally destroy the capacity of the hepatocytes and it will really insufficient the liver which will eventually lead to increase in the level of unconjugated bilirubin and the conjugated bilirubin. In my next video we will be discussing the really important MCQs, discussing the really important MCQs related with the jaundice. Thanks for watching.